Hello, bonjour everybody. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for watching my video. Special thanks for those who subscribe to my channel. This video is a video about flames of war and how it works. The subject is formation commanders. So before we start with the formation HQ and how it works, let's look at it on the definition of each word. So when we talk about the unit, a unit can be a platoon of three vehicles, like the IS-2 or the IS-152. Also a unit may be only one vehicle, like the IS-2 from Formation Commander. We also have a Formation HQ here for the infantry. It's a, a team of two. We have a shock rifle company here with the team unit leader or the unit leader. So when we talk about the formation, it is one unit of one or two vehicles or one or two infantry men that have armored vehicle, platoon of two or three vehicles in each platoon, and you need a minimum of two platoon. The same apply for the infantry. You will have the formation command of two teams most of the time, and then you will have some platoon com some company, battalion, whatever you name it, <coughs> depending on number of troops inside, of at least a minimum of two units of infantry and some uh, other unit to support the infantry, like the Maxim over here. When we look at inside the unit, the unit will have team. So for this IS-2, it's a team of only one vehicle for the formation command. The IS-152, it's three team. My IS-2 platoon have three team of IS-2. My Maxim have three team. One is the leader. Unit of a shock rifle company. Have the team leader, a team of a commissar, and several team of infantry that create the company. So when we arrive at the HQ unit of the formation, it can be of one thing, like this formation of IS-2 will have only one IS-2. And if you look at infantry, most of the time you will find two teams in the formation HQ, but only one team is the team leader for the unit and is also the team leader for the formation. So both, the our formation HQ, but it is a unit. Only one team act as the commander of the formation. So it's really important, only one team act as a leader. So when we look at the leader, that's why Flames of War provide a tag to demonstrate which one is the leader in the team formation HQ. So it's really important throughout the game, or throughout that example of the formation commander, if we look at infantry in this case, the unit of the formation HQ have a team leader for the unit, and it is as well the formation commander for all subunit under his command. So if you decide, I'm going to put this team here, and that team over here about six inches apart. So he can act as the formation commander for those units around and re-roll. You are wrong. If you place it over here to command this and uh, allow them to have a re-roll, for example, if they fail, then you're right because only one is the leader for the formation, not both of them. And you're going to see in the example or further down what it meant when we talk about the unit HQ of the formation with two teams and one is the leader and the team leader for the formation. So when we talk about command leadership, a commander presence can inspire troops to fight harder. When the unit leader is within six inches and in line of sight of their, of their own formation commander, so the unit may reroll fail counterattack, rally, remount, and last 10 roll. So my formation commander here, this guy, not the one, is part of the unit, but he's just a teammate. If he is less than six inches of my team leader of that company, he can reroll his fail. For example, if he has pinned down, he can reroll, if it is a tank, the re remount. He can do reroll last 10. And if that team is into assault and he is less than six inches, 
and you failed counterattack, you can reroll for counterattack. That's our few of the example. When we talk about support units, don't have their own formation commander. When you look at the organigram of Flames of War, you're going to see formation of infantry, formation of tank. The Soviet may have formation of AV, self-propelled gun form formation, etc. Reconnaissance team formation. They are a formation with a formation HQ and a formation leader. Support unit usually go underneath, and you will find inside that anti-tank team, uh, anti-tank unit. I mean, artillery unit, airplane are to the support. So they are the support of the formation. And if they have more than one formation, they support both formation regardless. They receive command from either formation commander, we can see. If my formation tank, that IS-2 for example, is near a unit, a support unit, or my leader here of the infantry, not this guy, is part of the unit, but is a second team. If they are less than six inches, regardless whose units they support, it's a support unit, they will be able to reroll and do everything that the uh, common leadership can provide to the support unit. So they grant them reroll opportunity for those support unit. So the first subject would be during the shooting step of your opponent. So we have a formation of IS-2. It is part of your team. So you have IS-2 formation HQ. You have a platoon of IS-2 in the battlefield nearby. My German Tiger will aim at those IS-2. So he aim at this guy. He's the closest one. So I have four shot to each Tiger. So I have two Tiger and the uh, rate of fire out. So they hit four dice. Let's say they roll three dice. If you aim at that guy, you don't allocate all three dice to him. You can distribute to other platoon members. So in that case, I can give him one. And you have to make sure when you attribute that all vehicle around has to be to a maximum of six inches of the target vehicle. So this one is less than six inches, so I can give him one dice. Now the next vehicle in the back he is still in command because my unit leader is right here, so they are in command. But he is more than six inches between this guy. So the third dice, the shooter is the one who decides, can say this guy or this guy. So let's say I put it to that guy. Now the IS-2 can play mistaken target and try to move, but he has to move it back to the one that is six inches to each other's because my tiger cannot aim at this guy. He can try to put one back here, so is it on him once. Now, when I used to play with other people, let's say I have my two tiger, they are alt, ROF2 each. I know that if I shoot it three times that guy, I can allocate to other team. But I thought that if I hit this guy, let's say I hit him three times, I cannot allocate to that team because they are not part of the same platoon. Now when you do read through the rule book or guideline book, you will know that if my tiger, I can choose to hit this guy. I roll three dice and I hit three times. Now I can allocate one here. I can as well allocate one here. And any team that is six inches from the formation command. So they are all inside formation command of six inches. So I can allocate this guy. When I shoot at this guy, I, get, I don't have to say, oh, one tiger will shot two and one tiger will shot two here. You can shoot all four shot at my formation commander here. And if I hit like three times, I can allocate to the other platoon of the same type. That means armored vehicle and part of the formation. So in this case, I allocate to those two teams and the owner of the formation here will have to roll for each one. When we talk about pin down unit or bailout tank, the formation commander will allow you to re-roll your miss to remount your tank or unpin your infantry. So when we look at here, when we see my formation headquarters IS-2 is right beside another platoon of IS-2. If those vehicles are bailed out, I place my team leader here for the platoon, further than six inches from my 
formation HQ. My formation HQ here is less than six inches of that vehicle, so he can re-roll if he fails his remount. If that vehicle is more than six inches, he cannot. It's not a question of is six inches from my team leader of the platoon, it's six inches of the tank itself in a whatever platoon. So he is less than six inches, he can re-roll if he fail his remount. This one is more than six inches from the formation HQ. He cannot re-roll if he fail. When we talk about infantry, only the platoon leader can unpin the platoon of infantry or company. So your formation HQ of infantry need to be at least six inches of the team leader. When we talk about bailout tank, we can look at a special rule for the bailout leader and commander. So that rule you can find in the rule book. It said, if a unit leader or formation commander is bailout, they may, at the start of any step, swap to another tank team within 6 inches, 15 centimeters, that is under their command. Their bailout tank then replaces the, the new one in its original unit. So let's say, previous turn for the opponent, he bailed you out, and he managed to bail that unit leader. It's your turn, starting step. What you do is you try to unpin your infantry, try to remount all tank. So that's on the starting step. So for the IS-2, motivation, confident, 4+, plus, and there's no line underneath that changed the score for remount. So you need to roll a 4+, plus. you roll a 3, you stay bail out. My formation commander is less than 6 inches, he can re-roll again, and if you roll a 6, he unpin. Now my formation commander roll, he rolled a 2. Because he's the formation commander, he can re-roll. And this time, he re-roll a 3. He stay bail out. And uh, all the starting steps are done. Now we do movement step. At the movement step, you start to move your unit. And then you think about that and say, you know what? My formation commander there is bail out. I don't like that. I want him able to move it. So I'm going to turn around. I'm going to choose a team that is part of my formation. It's the same kind. It's a tank. And it's not bail out. So I look at it. Less than 6 inches. There's a platoon of IS-2 part of my formation, and I pick a team that is not bailout, this team, and say, you know what, you're the bailout, and my formation HQ is not bailout anymore. So my unit team here can move, he can let him behind stay out of, uh, of the platoon, or he can just move and keep them just a bit behind, but still under six inches. And my formation HQ can move in their movement step at their normal tactical or dash move. So my next subject is leading from the front. And what it said in the rule book is a formation commander and HQ unit can combine with a unit from their formation to conduct a joint assault. To do this, the formation commander and the unit leader must be of the same type, tank or infantry, and must start the assault step within 6 inches or 15 centimeters and in line of sight of each other. For the duration of the assault, the combined unit is treated as a single unit having the worst of the two units counterattack. So we are in line of sight, six inches apart, so we can conduct an assault together, they are the same type, they are armored vehicle, and my formation HQ here are part of the same formation as the ISU-152. See, they move into contact with the enemy, so they are right against it. They receive defensive fire, they use their skill to hit, and because they are treated as a single unit, having the worst of the two unit counterattack value, the infantry roll for counterattack. Let's say they counterattack the tank. Everybody is safe. Nobody is bailed out or destroyed. Now my unit can try to counterattack. When we look at the formation HQ IS-2, they roll counterattack on the 3 plus. But because the ISU-152 counterattack is a 5 plus, you have to roll the worst of the two. In this case, ISU-152, it's a 5 plus. So you need to roll a 5 plus. If you want to counterattack, regardless the IS-2 formation HQ, it said counterattack on the 3 plus. Now, for example, it fail, but because the formation HQ with you, you can try to re-roll your 5 plus. So if it failed the second time, or it passed, so if, when it passed, you may decide to counterattack or break off. That's your choice. If it fail a second time, you have to break off. Now let's say the ISU-152 is assaulted by infantry. Everybody 
do defensive fire if they are less than 8 inches from the assault. Then the infantry will assault the ISU-152. When it's done, if they survive and they are not all three bailouts, they can try to counterattack. By doing that, the counterattack's motivation, 5 plus. If they fail, because the ISU, IS-2 formation commander is less than 6 inches from the assault, you can try to reroll counterattack. If he pass, he may choose to counterattack or break off. If he fail, again, he must break off. And every team that is less than six inches of the assault have to break off as well. Let's bring the subject of killing the commanders. When the formation commander is destroyed, the owning player can nominate another team from the same type from the HQ unit within six inches, 15 centimeters of the new formation commander. So in the case of my IS-2, he is a unit by itself, but he's the only ta tank inside the unit. When we look at my formation HQ for the infantry, it's a unit of two, so there's two teams. One team acts at the formation HQ, and he acts as a team leader for the unit. If that tank is destroyed, there's no other tank part of the unit that becomes the formation HQ. If my infantry unit, the team leader of the formation HQ as well, is killed. If my other team in the unit is less than six inches, he becomes the leader and he becomes the leader for his team. Now let's see. I'm going to add those. Let's say that on the previous turn, my team leader has been destroyed or killed because my unit have a second team and is less than six inches. This one gets removed from the table and this one replaced my formation HQ leader and he becomes the formation HQ leader. We play their turn, the Soviet play their turn, the German or wh whoever attacked them destroyed this tank, formation HQ. And this guy is killed as well. So we can just put that for the moment to go with the example. So what happened next is you will, you will roll a dice and you need to roll three plus. If you roll a three plus, you can take another vehicle of the same type in your formation and he can become the formation commander. So in this case, for example, we roll a three plus, he can decide the commander jump and run to my IS-2 here and it become the formation HQ. So he become the leader. Let's say he fail his re-roll and roll a one, then the formation, we don't have any formation HQ on the battlefield. Now let's back to the infantry. My formation HQ for the infantry, that is only one team because previous turn he lost one team, he got hit again. He need to roll the three plus, and if he fail, he is destroyed. If he succeed with the three plus, he can decide, okay, I have an infantry team less than six inches from my formation HQ, I can replace that guy with my formation HQ guys. So they become the formation HQ and team leader. So he become the team leader for the formation and he stay on the, on the battlefield. If you have been destroyed more than one time and you must roll a three plus to switch to another team of your formation of the same type, you only need to roll it one dice and it will work for the two, three times you have been killed. You cannot kill more than once someone, basically. That's logic. A formation HQ unit never have to do a last ten compared to the other platoon or company or battalion of infantry. The reason for that is the formation HQ is where the commander is for the formation. And the commander always stand and fight. Being heroic, HQ units never have to take a unit last ten test. So for the formation last ten, the formation need to be in good spirit. So to be in good spirits, a formation is in good spirit if it has at least two units, including the HQ unit, 
but not any transport unit from the formation on the table or in reserve. Remember, support units are not part of any formation, so will not keep them in good spirit. So you must have to be to be in good spirit, have the formation headquarters with the commander there and one unit from the formation. If you lose your formation commander or is killed in action, and then you find yourself with two or three units in the formation, you are not in good spirit. To be in good spirit, you need formation commander unit and one unit. So if you have three form three unit of in the formation but the formation commander is not there, then you need to roll for last 10 because it said the formation that is not in good spirit, so you don't have the commander, you're not in good spirit, at the start of a turn, after taking any required last 10 test, is automatically destroyed and all of its remaining units are destroyed as well. So even though you have three units from the formation, you're not in good spirit because to be in good spirit you need the formation headquarters and you need one unit. If you lose all your formation on the table because you had only one formation in your battlefield, you lose the game. I hope this video will help you to understand how formation commands work. If you have any comments, please do write in the comment section below. It helps me to have a better understanding of the game. Thank you for watching and see you soon with my next video. Bye bye.